it has always been just being passionate. I love what I do. I'm genuine. I genuinely take interest in helping every family. When I meet someone, my objective is to really find out what their goal is. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Hustle and Heart podcast. I have a special guest today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> My mom and business partner, Blanca Medellin. How are you? Good. Doing great. Thank you. I'm excited to be here and be part of this podcast. Uh, Thank you for inviting. I know. I just pulled you out. <laughs> I said, hey, come in here and come talk with me. But what I wanted to bring you in for is I really want to talk about something that I think you really do well in our business. And I think there's a lot of value in it. And it's really your ability to connect with clients, to build those deep relationships with clients. Um, and I think that's a huge, huge part of your success where you create these clients that are just extremely loyal to you, raving fans, they send you referrals, yeah. all these things. And, and so I want to kind of dive into that a little bit and just kind of pick your brain, you know, maybe your thought process, your strategy, is that just naturally who you are? Are there certain things that you make sure to do when, when dealing with clients and just overall, what is your approach on how to connect with clients at a deeper level? Yeah, that's, you know, it's, it's my passion, first of all, mm -hmm. right? Um, doing what I'm doing and being in this career and in this business, it, it takes you in different directions. But I think for me personally, it has always been just being passionate. I love what I do. I'm genuine. I genuinely take interest in helping every family. Every family has a different need. And I feel like when I meet someone, my objective is to really find out what their goal is. Mm. what are their trials, what their goal is, you know, what do they want to accomplish? Mm. And I just really give myself to that. Mm. And it just comes naturally. Um, yeah. I know you mentioned that, does it, you know, come naturally? It really does. I love what I do and that reward feeling when I help them accomplish their goal. Yeah. To me, it's like, it, it's like the, the adrenaline. Got it, yeah, got it. Yeah, the passion. And I mean, and, and prior to maybe talk about what you did before real estate, right? Because mm -hmm. it, it also was kind of in line with that service service <laughs> side, right? Yeah. And maybe was there anything you took from your previous career that you brought into real estate? Yeah, yeah. Before real estate, I was in banking. I worked in a financial institution and my role was uh, customer service. Mm. And in that role, again, there, I think that's where I started developing what I do is just connecting and helping. Mm -hmm. Coming from a sense of help and giving, mm -hmm. um, and that helped me climb the corporate ladder mm -hmm. and also connect with a lot of great families and clients. And I think that was kind of like my, my foundation, how I just continued to develop that. Mm. And connecting, connecting in a common ground with them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so so let's let's maybe like for the the viewers or people listening, maybe let's talk about when you walk into an appointment, right? Mm -hmm. Is there certain things that you make sure you say, how you approach the conversation, any tips or advice? If like in a real setting, you're in front of a client right now. Yeah, no, that's that's really uh, interesting that you ask that because we all get nervous. We all get nervous, or we're unsure who we're going to meet. Sometimes mm -hmm. some of these appointments. You just meet them on the phone. Mm -hmm. And as I'm driving to the appointment, I'm just kind of brainstorming a couple of conversations we had or a couple of tips that I pick up. And then it's just mainly just being myself. Mm -hmm. When I show up, introducing myself, being myself, asking them where they're at and just giving them that sense of calmness because mm. they don't know me. Mm -hmm. They don't know who I am. They don't know what my experience is. And I'm sure they're nervous just thinking, who's this crazy lady <laughs> walking fast over here or whatever it is. But yeah. um, it's more just being myself, yeah. being myself, listening to them. And I think the key is just letting them talk, letting them talk, letting them talk, letting them express what they're looking for, how I can help them achieve that and then just giving them a little background on me mm. and then before you know it we're having so many common connectors mm. i think that's also a big key is connecting they're humans yeah they're humans they're their family uh people their parents their students um their newlyweds their couples getting into their new homes and it's just connecting yeah mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense and you mentioned something right now letting them talk right and i think in sales, right? You know, ultimately we're in sales and service is that's really important to let people talk, yeah. right? Because when you let them talk, then they feel like they're being heard. And right. when they feel like they're being heard, they develop that sense of trust and stuff. With right. You, right. Right. Yes. Um, what do you do when you meet maybe someone who is not the most pleasant? 
Yeah, and, and, and trust <laughs> me, I've had right? those. Yeah, I've had those. Those clients that play hardball yes. or whatever, right? Yes, I have a few coming to mind right now. <laughs> and believe it or not, we're like really good friends. Somehow you break that little shell or you get them to show who they truly are. And that's just maybe who they are. Yeah. Um, nothing against you, but it just, you know, you have to dig in a little more. Yeah. Just ask a little more questions, dig in a little bit more. Um, make sure you're listening because they'll know if you're listening or if you're not or yeah. if you're just kind of uh-huh nodding no they'll know they if know, you're listening. Right? yes but no i've had a couple of those and again it it goes back to just letting them talk and listen yeah and those that don't want to talk too much just ask the open-ended questions yeah yeah get in there so what would be an example of like a question you would ask the client right like a open-ended question to kind of break the ice or a statement like oh like i know um I've been on appointments with you, right? And, yeah. I, and I, I think one thing you always say is like, you congratulate them, yeah. right? Tell me about yeah. that and where that comes from. I do from. that. And I still use that to this day on every Zoom on appointment I go on, on an, every meeting I go on, just because in our area, in our Bay Area, it's so difficult to get into a home sometimes. Yeah. There's a lot of factors going on with uh, pricing, with interest rates, um, competition, a lot of factors that go on that just have customers a little bit on edge or uneasy. Mm -hmm. Or is it the right time or is it not the right time? That's like the number one question that's always in, in their heads. Um, but what I like to do is just congratulate them because yeah. if they're already in that position, I always just say, Hey Enrique, congratulations <laughs> for taking the step of home ownership. Yeah. And and don't take your foot off the pedal. It's gonna get bumpy, but I'm gonna be here with you to yeah. go through it with you. That's kind of how I started off and breaking the ice and yeah. congratulating them. And I think they feel like that sense of genuine. Yeah. And I do, I'm excited for them. Yeah. Every client I meet, whether it be a townhome condo, whether it be a single family home or a, a luxury multi-million dollar home, my emotion and my feeling is the same. Yeah. Because I'm their avenue to help them get to where they want to go and I am excited for them. Yeah. Yeah. And I like that. I, I think just the psychology behind that. And maybe you don't even, maybe it's not even that deep for you, it's just who you are. But when you congratulate someone, yeah. you're immediately giving them a compliment. Yes. Right? And when mm -hmm. you give them a compliment, it changes their attitude, it, right? So, right? I mean, it, it does. It right? does. I'm sorry that I interrupted you, but it does because right away it like puts a smile in their face, like, oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, you're <laughs> right? right. Thanks. And then they're and not it, focused on no, being nervous no more, not, and they're kind of like, yeah, they're not. And it kind of broke the ice, and it makes them feel a little more comfortable. And hey, we can tell her what we're feeling or how we're feeling, and yeah. and then I also tell them every emotion you're having is absolutely normal. I'm sure you're nervous, unsure, worried. And if you don't have these emotions, then something's wrong. We need to talk about it. <laughs> but just joking around, right? But they do. They have so many emotions that yeah. just addressing them or acknowledging, acknowledging those emotions, letting yeah. them know it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. And when you let them know it's okay and you're, you know, congratulating them and you're, you're putting them at ease, like from the very start of the conversation... Yeah. I think what that does is it drops their guard absolutely, and it lets them know like, okay, it's okay to be open with you. Yeah. It's okay to be honest with you. It's okay <laughs> yes. to share what we're going through, yes. right? Yes. Which ultimately leads to the better relationship. Yes. Right? Yes. And, and there's also those appointments sometimes where it's a lot deeper, where it's a lot more emotional, where something's going on, a family event, or they're having to make this move. So not only are we excited at times, but we're also in it with them when if, if it's something sensitive mm. or it's something a little more emotional. Again, it's listening and just connecting. Yeah. 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 I mean, because when you're helping someone sell, for example, sometimes it's for different reasons. Sometimes it's not because they want to sell. Exactly. Right? Maybe they're going through a life event or a change exactly. or a divorce or a death yes. or something going on. Yes. And it's like you have to be sensitive to that, right? Absolutely. So it's just, you know, knowing what they're going through and acknowledging it, letting them know they're not alone, letting yeah. them know it's okay, letting them know they can trust me to get them to where they want to go to the finish line to their next step. Got it. Yeah. And just something that came to my mind is when mm -hmm. clients are going through stuff, do you ever feel like you kind of take that stress on yourself? Yeah. Absolutely. And how do you deal with that? Oh my goodness. I ha I, I'm very personable and I do take a lot of my clients um, emotions, feelings, life events that they're going through very yeah. personal. 
So it does. And and like I said, it, at the end, not only am, am I their realtor, but we're friends. Yeah. I'm a family friend now. I'm someone that they can call and talk to. There's times where it's not, you know, within real estate, but they're calling me for something different. And I'm like, yes, I'm here. Let's talk. What's yeah. going on? <laughs> yeah. So you just take it on as you would as a friend. Yeah. Yeah. How does that make you feel when you get those calls from someone and like they just they felt like they could confide in you or talk to you. Absolutely good. Yeah. Absolutely good. And I just feel like, hey, I'm, I'm doing my job not only as a professional, but as a human being. Yeah. You know, I'm connecting with them on a personal level and they're feeling comfortable with me at that level. So it's, it's good feelings. Yeah. yeah. And I, I know a lot of times I think it's hard because you're trying to separate the, the feelings from like the transaction and the professionalism. Yeah. But if you think about it, when someone's buying or selling a home, like it's just a big, big deal for <laughs> them, is. right? It is, yeah. And like you said, we're humans at the end of the day, so you can't help but feel close to these yeah. clients or feel yeah. connected with them. Or mm -hmm. when you understand what they went through to get to this point, yeah. you know, you, yeah. you feel for them, you know, you feel for them and stuff like I that. I do. And then also, Enrique, keep in mind, we also come from an upbringing, right? And yeah. sometimes it, it resonates, or you're like, hey. I remember when my parents were doing this, or mm. I remember when my aunts and uncles were doing this. You kind of go back and, and you remember when you were a kid growing up and yeah. hearing them, we're going to buy our first home, we're saving for our down payment or whatnot, and now I'm a vehicle to help them. Yeah. So it's it's just overall, it's amazing. It becomes full circle, right? <laughs> it becomes a full circle, yes. Okay, so I got one last thing to ask you, a little yeah. curveball right here. In real estate, things happen, right? In transactions, they don't all go smooth, right? Mm -hmm. We try to do everything we can to make them go smooth. How do you deal with a client when something is maybe not going so smooth? Maybe there's a hiccup in the transaction, something comes up, you guys hit a, hit a roadblock, you got a client maybe who's upset or yeah. whatever. What is, what is some of your advice on how to deal with that? And, and I've had plenty of those as well. Um, and it's normal. Every transaction or every purchase is going to be different and there's going to be a different roadblock. And for me, it's really just understanding their perspective, mm. understanding what their um, mind frame is, mm -hmm. what their expectation is, or was it something that could have been explained a little bit different, mm -hmm. or what's the solution, mm -hmm. right? There always has to be a solution where maybe we give a little bit or we help them accomplish what they're unhappy about. Yeah, yeah it's just really helping them. And it happens a lot. Yeah. It could be something as simple as, um, handing keys and the previous seller didn't take away all their debris. Yeah. Now, how do we, and that happens at the very end when we're happy, we're celebrating, and then we go and the backyard has tons of debris and we're like, oh, great. Yeah. Don't worry, let's figure it out. Let yeah. me make some calls. Hopefully the, the agent is still on board and we're able to get a solution. And if not, there's always a solution. Just yeah. knowing that you can help them out. And, and I think also what you're, what you've, explain right there is, is keeping your composure as well, right? Yeah. Like rather than being defensive and like yeah. becoming like you against the client no. is you try to put yourself in their, their shoes, shoes, right? Yeah. And understand where they're coming from yeah. and how they might feel. Mm -hmm. And then, hey, how, we're a team here, right? Yeah. How can I help yeah. remedy this situation or whatever's going on? Yeah, you're right. Because if you think that way, it's easier for them to sense that you're coming from a genuine place to help them out yeah versus you're defensive or you're upset as well then you're not getting anywhere it's more the listening and and them knowing that you're wanting to help out yeah yeah and i think the big takeaway there is if you do enough transactions things are things are going to happen yeah. right like if yeah. if things aren't going wrong i guess that means you ain't closing enough deals <laughs> right like being in the industry for so yeah. long you've helped you know probably hundreds and hundreds of clients throughout your career now um things are gonna happen, right? That are mm -hmm. out of your control mm -hmm. a lot of times. Mm -hmm. But how you deal with those things is really what can make or break right. how that client feels and what yeah. the relationship ends up being in the end. Absolutely, and I think it's just finishing off and leaving that good impression, that lasting impression, they're gonna remember that. And they're yeah. gonna say, hey, at the end this happened, but my agent was able to help me out. Blanca was able to do this, or she was able to figure it out, or it was completely on the other side, but she did this to yeah. help us out, so. And I would even like to say that when something goes wrong, it's actually an opportunity for you to really gain some points with them. It's true. Because mm -hmm. if everything's just going good, yeah. okay, great, right? Yeah. But if something goes wrong, and yeah. then you come and save the day, right? 
like they're gonna look at you like yeah. oh man like yeah. right how could we have gotten through this without you it, you're absolutely right because that gives us the opportunity to just really showcase and shine and reassure them hey i picked the right realtor to work yeah. with but then there's times when the transaction's going so smoothly so <laughs> easy that i'm like what's going on i'm waiting for <laughs> you're something, waiting for I'm something, waiting something, for to, something wrong, to happen yeah? it's coming i know it's coming because yeah. we're just so used to things coming up um you know little hurdles of one sort or, a, or another that when the transaction does go just super smooth it's like wait a minute wait a minute wait a yeah. minute something's going on but we do have those too yeah. which is great and i like that you pointed that out because that's also something that i realized early on and like a mindset that i established with myself is that there's always going to be a hurdle in every transaction yeah. i yeah. kind of just set that expectation yeah some of them will be small bumps some of them will yeah. be big things we got to yeah. get through but just always expect something. And, right. if, and if nothing happens, then that was like yeah. the blessing, the cherry on top. It was right? meant to be. Yeah. Another thing really quick, Enrique, that I would like to mention is that I've changed my um, train of thought when something does go wrong or when something comes up mm. where I, I've turned it to be a learning experience. Mm. Because if I dwell on it or I'm worried about it and, and see it that way, it's gonna affect me more. But now I'm like, okay, how can I learn from this to avoid it in the future? Mm. Or what was the takeaway from this? Because I feel like every time something happens, as a real estate agent, it's the experience that, are, that grows mm -hmm. and it empowers us to be a lot more savvy mm -hmm. and a lot more predictable. Mm -hmm. When we hear things coming up, we already know, oh, I went through this already. Now I know I got to put this in place or make sure I avoid that or things like that. Yeah. So now a days, after many years in the business, I learned that it's a learning experience. Yeah, yeah. I like that. <laughs> that's, that's a good one. Because because how you view that can really make or break, you yeah. know, how you really see the business, yeah. how you manage your stress levels, yes. how long you last, mm -hmm. all those different things. And mm -hmm. we talked about it today in our meeting, a big part of this business is having that the right yeah. mental attitude, the right mindset. Yeah. That's a big part of your success in business. It right? is. It really is. Yeah. And I've learned to embrace that and I think it has helped me a hundred and ten percent just be who I am today. Yeah. Um, the more experienced agent, the the you know don't worry agent because now i have some of the junior agents come to me with a little problem that they're thinking is this big and yeah. i'm like we got this don't yeah, worry we we'll figure it, it out <laughs> yeah so. that's awesome well i um i think we we touched on a lot of stuff there's a lot yeah. of takeaways there i do want to just um you know thank you you know for coming on the podcast and also thanking you for all that you contribute to the team yeah. you know honestly like People be, you know, tell me like, oh, I couldn't have done this without Blanca. Oh, I'm so grateful for Blanca, like nice. other agents on the team. And I think it's just a testament to, you know, your yeah. whole attitude, your, how you care about people, your passion, yeah. you know, for helping not just the clients, but also helping, you know, the other agents yeah. that are coming up as well. And thank you. Thank you. It's my honor. I'm proud to be part of the team. Um, I love it. I love everybody we work with. and. It's your leadership too that we follow, and I'm learning a lot from you, my son. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Yes. You learn from me in business, and then you, I learn from you about life yes. and stuff, right? Yes. Yes. And, so thank you. All right, guys. Well, there you have it, guys. Hustle and heart with Blanca Medellin. I uh, hope you guys got some value out of this. We'll see you next time.